Imagine for a moment that, say, Serena Williams suddenly went missing for weeks without a trace. And then the US government claimed that she was totally fine. And to prove it, they released an image of the star in what looked suspiciously like a proof of life hostage photo. It would raise quite a few questions, would it not? That's basically what happened to China's top tennis star, Peng Shui. She has been missing from public life for more than a month after she accused a top Communist Party leader of sexual assault. An email purportedly from Peng was released by Chinese state media several weeks later, claiming everything is fine. State media then distributed images of Peng attending a youth tournament in Beijing on November the 20th. Neither the images nor the email could be independently verified. Concern over Peng's safety has been building, and this week it reached a breaking point. On Wednesday, the Women's Tennis Association announced a suspension of all tournaments in China. The Communist Party's response to Peng's accusations seemed to have backfired spectacularly, and a fascinating piece in the New York Times suggests they could even be fueling a feminist movement in that authoritarian country. Joining me now is the author of that op-ed, journalist and author Leita Hong Fincher. Um, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. In your piece, you write, quote, the upper echelons of the Chinese Communist Party have been largely impenetrable to scandal and enjoyed relative respect from much of the population. But Miss Peng's allegations raise the specter that not all is well within the elite ranks and that maybe she's not alone. More women could speak up, the floodgates could open, and the party can't have that. Why is this case so different? And do you really believe it poses some kind of potential existential threat to the Chinese Communist Party? Well, uh, yes, thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, so I write about this feminist movement that has been going on in China for quite a few years already, actually. And the, the Me Too movement has gone on for several years as well, which is extraordinary given how tightly the Internet uh, and the media are controlled in China. So what is yes. what makes this particular case with Peng Shui just so explosive is, first of all, she is very famous in China. She's a famous figure. And her lengthy accusation um, against the senior Communist Party official was up on Weibo for almost half an hour. And so um, I think several million people at least saw it. And then she is accusing one of the most powerful men in China of sexual assault. And we never hear about these senior leaders in the Communist yes. Party ever. We don't know anything about them. So those two, the two people involved alone make this a, just a bombshell. Yes. And you have the reaction now internationally to this bombshell, as you rightly put it. The WTA was applauded for their strong move uh, in boycotting China. Other organizations and figures have been far less courageous when it comes to confronting the CCP. Billionaire investor Ray Dalio reportedly has billions invested in China when confronted about the country's human rights abuses on CNBC this past week. He said this. Have a listen. As a top down country. What they're doing is that it's that kind of like a strict parent. They behave like a strict parent. For that, Dalio was rightly criticized by none other than Mitt Romney, who said Dalio's, quote, feigned ignorance of China's horrific abuses was, quote, a sad moral lapse. But it's not just Dalio. You have Disney afraid of confronting China. Uh, they've got an episode of The Simpsons, I believe, that refers to the Tiananmen Square massacre, which is now reportedly missing from Disney's streaming service in Hong Kong. What do you make of the impact of these American investors and corporations seemingly bowing down to China at a major moment like this? So uh, this is very typical. I mean, for many years now, major corporations have all silenced themselves. They're extremely reluctant to say anything remotely critical of Beijing. Um, and that, that uh, sadly, is typical, which is what makes the stance of the Women's Tennis Association really extraordinary in its just principled opposition to Beijing and the fact that the WTA is going to pull out all of its tennis tournaments. I mean, it stands to lose millions of dollars. Um, unfortunately, that's unusual, uh, but it does yeah. add a lot of pressure on Beijing. And, and I would also add the fact that there are quite a few famous athletes, not just tennis stars, but other athletes, who have tweeted um, with the hashtag, where is Peng Shui, um, demanding that uh, the Chinese so, government produce evidence of where she is. 
One last quick question just on that. You know, everyone's been drawn to this famous tennis player, understandably. Uh, but you have China accused of committing crimes against humanity and possibly genocide even against the Uyghur population in Xinjiang. Millions of Uyghurs have reportedly gone missing. And journalist CJ Werleman had an interesting tweet this week in which he said, wait, you'll boycott China over one missing tennis star, but not three million missing Uyghur Muslims. Uh, I wonder what your reaction is to that, the way in which we as an international community, the rest of the world, react to certain cases, but not others. Yes, I mean, um, I I think that it's it, it's natural to be drawn to the story of one human being. That's just yeah. the way our media works. <laughs> um, and well, so, it, it, so I I mean I I I'd, I think that this is about much more than just one tennis player. It's a moment. I mean, Peng Shui herself was probably molded by the women's rights climate, the fact that the Me Too movement has gained momentum in China. There has been a lot of discussion of feminist issues in recent years. Um, so I think that without that climate, she herself wouldn't have posted her accusation. Um, and, and I say that this moment is kind of like uh, in 2015 when the Chinese government jailed five feminist activists who were completely unknown. And then there was a, a lot of international outcry over their case as well. Um, so, but I, I think whatever it takes to shine a spotlight on human rights abuses in China. It's a very fair and good argument. Later, Hong Fincher, appreciate you taking time out tonight. Thanks so much for having me.